Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. We're discussing the Chicago trial and the Chicago federal trial and the federal Brooklyn appeal. Everything is at a standstill right now. They're going into the continuance of the deliberations with the first um, opening testimony in Chicago. You know, it's a real trying time when you have people painting the picture prosecution painting the picture of Robert as though, you know, this is something that they're just making up as they go along. I want you to listen to Jim Derogatis' interview with CBS um, and, and, and just listen to how he paints the picture of his old way of looking at Robert based upon what he was trying to promote in his own uh 1990s way of a career and this has been a career for him and so let's just listen and then we'll come back and we'll break everything down so here we go he's facing several charges including obstruction of justice linked to a 2008 child pornography trial in which he was acquitted kelly is accused of paying off an underage girl after allegedly filming himself abusing her. He is already serving a 30-year sentence for a separate sex trafficking charges. So for more on this trial, we want to bring in journalist Jim Adiragatis. He is the author of Soulless, The Case Against R. Kelly. So thanks for joining us. Um, I feel like we have to sort of go back in time a little bit um, so you can kind of like tell us how we got to this point with this case because he actually walked on this uh situation in the early yeah. aughts and now we're yes. back and the victim is willing to talk so tell us how we got here well the first story that the sun times ran about kelly abusing underage girls uh, uh was 2000 december 21 2000 and in february 2002 i got horrifying graphic evidence of that uh a videotape 26 minutes and 39 seconds of kelly having sexual contact with a 14 year old it took uh an absurd six years because of uh a judge who consistently ruled in favor of the defense and the money and power kelly had to delay the trial in 2008 that trial about one minor on one videotape uh, resulted in his acquittal. The judge had uh, disallowed any evidence that this was a pattern of behavior, that there were other minors who had filed civil suits and been paid off and signed non-disclosure agreements. Uh, Aaliyah's name never came up in that 2008 trial. It was reduced to one girl on one videotape. And we now know, according to the prosecutor's uh, indictment that that girl and her family were paid off to disappear and not testify uh so in some ways this harkens back to one of the biggest travesties of justice in the history of the chicago cook county court system uh in another it uh brings new evidence to light of kelly uh, sexually abusing uh, 14, 15 year old girls and videotaping it because that first video, along with several others, uh, that first victim who is now cooperating, uh, with the federal government, as well as several others, all are going to be laid out, uh, in the coming weeks as the prosecution makes its case. So what's it been like for you, uh, watching this story unfold, given how close you are to it, uh, through your reporting? There's an odd sense of deja vu now uh, for the incidents of, of uh, 2008 to be in a federal courtroom. But, uh, you know, I always defer uh, the turmoil in my life for 22 years reporting on this pales in comparison to the damage done to so many of Kelly's victims, 22 that resulted in his conviction on all counts in Brooklyn uh, last fall, and now four or five young women in this video, um, you know, what they're going through, having all of this in the headlines again, what every one of his victims is going through, um, it, it just is a horrible trigger, and it's, it's traumatizing. 
Um, you know, you pointed out that the 2008 case was very narrow. It just focused on one victim, one incident, yeah. no pattern. Um, now, and I have to say, this alleged victim is a full-fledged adult, and she is willing to testify. So that's a big difference between what happened yes. in 2008 and what's happening now. But I'm wondering about what else is different about the trial. Are they taking into account, and I don't know if they can, the other conviction? He's already behind bars for, for abusing minors or, yeah. or anything else. Um, well, obviously, they can't bring in too much of what happened in Brooklyn. <laughs> Excuse me. I think the major difference is going to be that original 26 minute and 39 second video was mm -hmm. the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, think about how long that is, the length of a sitcom and a 14 year old is being ordered about and abused for all of that time. Now there are multiple videos. Kelly, uh, as was heard in federal court in Brooklyn, so I don't think allegedly needs to be uh, mm -hmm. part of it anymore, had a pension for uh, sexual contact with underage girls and boys for arranging scenes of multiple uh, uh, sexual contact with these minors. Um, I can only imagine, because I've heard tell in my reporting of some of these other victims and some of these other videos, I think the cumulative evidence that that jury is going to have to endure of this sexual abuse on in living color on video, there was very little video uh, and no explicit video and some disturbing audio in the first federal trial in Brooklyn. This is going to be all about these videos. And I don't see how anybody uh, sees them and, and acquits, of course. I didn't understand how that happened in 2008. And if that case hadn't been a travesty weighted by the judge in favor of the defense, uh, in my opinion, um, I just am haunted by how many other young women uh, would have been spared the trauma that they went through because Kelly's uh, behavior only intensified after his 2008 acquittal. So, so, um, you sort of mentioned what we can expect over the next couple of weeks. But again, yeah. one of the things I'm always used to bring a case to jury trials, uh, presumably they do that because they think they can win, right? The last time around, they did not win. This time, if you're going to go through that, if you're going to go through all the things that you just mentioned, Jim, presumably the prosecutor thinks that there's a solid chance that they convince that they can convince a jury that he's guilty. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't I don't think I think it's kind of a no brainer. Um, you know, I uh, was surprised at the uh, width and depth uh, and breadth of that case uh, in Brooklyn in federal court last fall. Uh, they won on every count. He is sentenced to 30 years behind bars. This case, I believe, is just as strong, uh, and it has that video. So, uh, you know, I, I had heard that Kelly was offered a plea deal uh, to serve some time concurrent with the Brooklyn section, uh, the, the Brooklyn uh, sentence, and he passed on it, whether that was because of Jennifer Bonjean, his high-powered defense attorney, or his own hubris. He has never expressed remorse for any of the things he is now convicted of. Uh, there is no sense that he did anything wrong. And, uh, you know, he didn't testify in Brooklyn. He didn't make a statement at sentencing. We probably won't hear from him in the Chicago trial, but he thinks he is above the law. He thinks he is the world's greatest, to, to, to quote one of his song titles, and his talent as a musician allows him to behave uh, any way he wants with no concern whatsoever to the, <laughs> I know the names of 68 of his victims that I've spoken to. I believe that list is well into the hundreds. There were 22 witnesses, victims in, in the New York trial. There's going to be uh, four or five in this one. It's just a horrifying, you know, we, we haven't wrapped our head around the fact that no one in the history of popular music has ever been convicted of as many crimes against women as this man. And let's face it, you know, in this music world that I love and cover as a journalist and critic, men have treated women badly for a very long time. But no one has ever gotten a 30-year sentence, which now could be extended doubled. 
So, Jim, let me ask you, you said you've spoken to a number of his witnesses. Have you spoken to the witness yeah. that's at the center of this case? And if you have, I'm curious about why she decided to pursue it now. Mm -hmm. We don't know who she is. He's already been convicted, so he's being punished for this sort of behavior. She could easily just sort of allow that chapter to close for her, but she's, she's going yeah. forward. Well, her, I, I have never spoken to her. Mm -hmm or her mother or her father, although we tried very hard when that videotape came to us. And even a year earlier, when we did our initial reporting, because we'd heard she was being sexually abused. Um, but I spoke to her family members. Her aunt testified uh, in the uh, 2008 trial. So did, you know, her basketball coach, some of her best friends and teachers, many people wanted to stop the abuse of this girl at the time. I think she's testifying now because the full range of Kelly's behavior has been driven home uh, by the 22 having R. Kelly, the docu-series, by, certainly by the Brooklyn uh, conviction. I think that she has realized her and so many young black girls. The court system failed her, the schools failed her and others because Kelly was in, but there's a picture of Kelly sitting in the stands at the high school in Oak Park, uh, watching her play basketball. It read in the, in the high school newspaper. Uh, all but a handful of Chicago cops, uh, uh, there were investigators who worked hard, uh, but there were also Chicago cops who moonlighted as Kelly's security. Journalism failed, aside from the Chicago Sun-Times. Very few other media organizations covered this story. The Black Church failed. The Reverend Jesse Jackson and James Meeks of Rainbow Push uh, were Kelly's spiritual advisors, bringing kindergarten kids in free R. Kelly t-shirts in school buses to his court appearances in 2008. And the music industry failed. Now, two of his a uh, longtime sideman, uh, a key uh, business manager and a gopher best friend are on trial with him here. But we have still seen no one in the music industry, the heads of Jive Records, the biggest label of the 90s. R. Kelly was label mates with Britney Spears and NSYNC. They have never been held to account for the money paid to young girls to silence them for allowing Kelly's behavior to continue. I have on very good sources Sources, that Kelly generated a billion dollars in income for Jive Records. Well, you know, how the record industry is the record industry. He only made a quarter of a billion himself. Wow. Hmm. Quite a picture you paint, Jim. It really is. Yeah. Uh, Jim, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. It's going to be an interesting month. Mm -hmm. It really is. So that was a interview from CBS News. And I wanted to bring that today because I feel that it is number one going on, and this is how prosecution has chose to paint the picture for the jury in the Chicago federal trial that's going on right now with Robert Sylvester Kelly. And it is amazing. It's amazing how they're going to show pornographic film footage. And Jim Derogatis is going to get all of these people to assume a side that I don't know. I just don't know that, you know, I, I, to me, I feel that if a person has not reported for so long of a time, they have to give me a reason to why they're choosing to report today. Like what has happened? If it's the Me Too movement, then that in and of itself is critical perjury. It's just, it happened to Me Too. That's not a, that's not a, a strong enough advocacy because the Me Too movement is not an advantageous advocacy. It's not a, a movement that millions of people come to and they've been taught to learn the areas of domestic violence of, you know, the, the, the major aspects of, you know, healing the mind from different, you know, negative actions that have happened in our lives. This is just a group of people who are politically defining and using black women as a crutch to take down a black man. 
and in the political arena, anytime a major focus is sent upon a person or group of people who have never been paid attention to before, it is because there is financial gain, there is a propaganda that's being presented to society, and that's how all of this is coming to begin again. Like Dear Goddess said in the interview, it is another deja vu moment. This is a thing that Dear Goddess obviously wanted to take R. Kelly down with because of the fact that they said that it was him in this video. But it was a lot of money. He wants to put it on the financial aspects of entrepreneurship. So basically, R. Kelly should not be the only one that is going down. Jive Records, definitely, and we did a video about them and how much money they made. You know, we talked about Reverend Louis uh, Farrakhan and how he was sharing with him $950 billion um, or, or for how much he really was worth. Okay, so you have to take into consideration those those aspects. I also feel that the mother and the father and the daughter, they've already invested their success in whatever they had a contract with. Whether the contract was with giving him, you know, sexual favors, I don't know. But if that was the situation and they've been paid um, a portion of what it is that he paid them along with, as you see, he, um, you know, I just don't know. I wasn't there. And for this young lady to come out now in 2022 because of the Me Too movement, I could see if it was before then with definite evidence. This is the tape. This is me. Well, why wasn't it you in 2008? How was it not you? How was it not you in 2008, but it is you in 2022? This is where it began, begins to look like a circus with a bunch of clowns riding on a unicycle with the red nose, looking up to the ceiling, just acting, just the body being there for entertainment. This is for entertainment purposes only. You know, this is not an entourage of a mafia kingpin doing all of this chaotic stuff that was going on and everybody was so afraid of him. Because if the fear was there, the fear was there in 2008. Like he said, December 21st, my birthday, 20, uh, 2002, or whatever that's when he got the that's when he got this horrific tape well with this horrific tape he sent it to cnn because i remember doing an article on him dear god is sending it to cnn cnn said there wasn't enough evidence on the tape to prove that it was r kelly some people so they made 50 copies of this video now he's trying to make it seem as though there are 50 different copies of different women on video do you see the lies do you see the misconceptions and these are the things that the jury i pray will not fall for they would have to say okay show me the other 50 tapes show me that they're separately different show me that there are definite marks that can identify Robert Sylvester Kelly just as if a person gets into an accident. I know I had a friend I went to school with. She lived in Atlanta, Georgia. She was passing Buford Highway. She was an alcoholic. She's, you know, passing Buford Highway. She cuts across. So she thinks she can make an eight lane, 75 
uh, miles per hour crossing. So she starts to do so. She gets flipped over, jumped up, everything. She's gone. The only thing that they can identify my friend with is her dental records. That was it. I don't even know how they did the dental records. But what I'm saying too is that all of that, there needs to be some type of identifying blemish, a mark, or something that relates this to Robert, him being that body on that videotape. And I could see putting, you know, and I don't even think this would even be relevant to do, but to just put a picture of him at that particular time, specifically looking just as he looked, or even listening to his voice through the video. I'm sure that there are some, you know, identifying vocal marks on this videotape that could show that it is him or not. So, I mean, this really begins to get very, very simple, simplistic to me. So I don't have much to report other than just what I, I share with you. So my heart and my spirit and my mind goes out to my brother, Robert Sylvester Kelly. I know how it, how it is when the world is against you. I was United States versus, or not United States, but the state of Ohio versus me. So I understand how you're feeling. I get it. But hold your head up high because the ex exams that you're going through is going to create whatever should have manifested in your life in 2008. It's going to create the balanced fulcrum for you to exist and go beyond that which you know now. You know, this is something that is so significantly severe for you, but it is something that's going to be victorious when you write your book. It's not going to be an 11 pager. It's not going to be another solar coaster. You've already gone through the roller coaster of solar coaster. It's going to be something victorious that is going to abound people and get people. You know, someone asked me the question, what if, you know, he's found guilty and everything he's given life and he'll never be able to, you know, come out. What are you going to do with the channel? Well, my thing is to continue to speak his, his legacy, to continue to speak his, his knowledge through his music, but also to continue to let people know what's going on in his life. Because if that is happening, many people will give up on Robert Sylvester Kelly. And what I say to Kelly Nation is this will always be a platform where we know what's going on, you know, with him at all times. But I really and truly can't even see him getting life for this Chicago thing at all. I don't see him getting, and, and I also see the appeal being retried, if not thrown out. He's going to get, Bon Jean is doing her part. Bon Jean is so strong in there, in the belly of the beast with him. And all those demonic forces are surrounding them like fire. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. No one knows the indiglo that is internally within the auspice of the man. The man that is blessed. The man who came here not knowing who his own father was. A man who saw things that he shouldn't have seen at a very young age. A man who tried to be the best man he could be. And Jim Derogatis, you know, I feel that he wants to bring him down because he is a black man and a king is never supposed to outshine anyone in America. And this is sad because Jim Dare Goddess, you are a, you are, are very disgusting. You're very, very, um, just, you're disgusting because what you're doing is you're painting the picture to these individuals in a way 
that you yourself don't even know. You never got to talk to this girl. You don't know if what Sparkle told you was the truth or not. Even someone came to you, Jim Dare Goddess, and literally told you that it, it they weren't sure. And this was somebody who knew Robert specifically. And they said, I don't believe that's him on that tape. You are, you are, you are distracting through your interviews just because you couldn't be that rock star that R. Kelly was when you were the same age and you had to quit your music passion to go to Sun Times. See, your story has been followed too. Your story has been followed too. You are not squeaky clean yourself. How can someone take the word of someone who is constantly stalking and lying and you went and ro and and Robert even said this in Solar Coaster, you went, or no, you said it in Solus. You said, I went door to door trying to find someone to talk to. And these people wouldn't even let you in. So now all of a sudden, you have the same woman who wouldn't let you in back then, but you're in now, 2022, after Me Too movement. So... I feel that a lot of this is propaganda. I feel that a lot of this conversation with this interview has to deal with painting the picture to make Robert look something that he's not. He is not a monster. He is not a, ch a child pedophile, as they said, because the reports and his expert study from his his psychologist even states that he has no tendency of that. So maybe prosecution needs to get their, their doctors to come and relook at, test them, give them a test. Because this is ridiculous. This man is not going to get the fairness that is afforded an individual who is who is literally going through what he's going through right now. I mean, that's why it's so difficult for me to keep up with this trial. And that's why I have to report a day later because I want my information to be accurate. And you know, these 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 testimonies that's being proven right now, there's nothing on the docket. That docket will move after trial. But what I wanna say is during trial, the way that they are painting the pictures is giving me a headache. It's making me feel as though I need to meditate more and bring my frequency level down to that point where I can just be at peace because it's too much. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to handle and it's not even my case. I'm just uh, extending my, my, my emotion out and my feelings and my empathy out to my brother because he is going through the major test of time, test of faith. And whoo, I just, you know, when he was sitting there with all the people around him, let's braid my hair, come braid my hair. Now you got the hair braider trying to, you know, get in on the downfall because they knew, they knew that with Robert, with Robert came lots of money. And without him came supposedly even more money. So at what point do we hold accountable jive records at what point do we hold, as my friend Timothy asked, at what point do we hold Sony responsible? At what point do we hold, you know, um, the system at large responsible for, you know, sweeping whatever created this horrific situation decades later under the rug? Who swept that under the rug? Bring them out. They need to come out.
They need to come out and they need to make themselves accountable. They need to make themselves accountable. Test of time. You will know when you've gone through the test of time. You don't even, you can't even fathom or imagine how you made it through the test. You're going to have lonely nights. You're going to feel so down and alone and confused. And you're going to see the people who were supposed to be there for you turn their backs on you beyond your blood kin. You're going to know that you're in the test of time when you don't know anything anymore. A lot of people use the when we get older, it's called, dis, uh, not dyslexia, but dementia. And I know he's living in a world of confusion that could land him there because what seems like he used to remember is nothing as it is today. During the test of time, I'll be looking for you. I sought you out. I thought it was you, but you turned your back and it wasn't you. So I started running to you. The test of time drew us further and further, further apart because I got stuck in this tar. I got stuck and you kept going. You left me behind. I was looking for true love during this test of time. This test was an exam that many fail. Many are going to fail this test expecting for someone to make you feel whole and new again. The test of time will show you they can't make you feel that way, Robert. You have to work to feel that way yourself when all have left you and all you have is your memories. You know, you were the star. You were the one that all these energies were surrounded by. You were the one that they were surrounding themselves around. You were the star. And being the star is not a bad thing. It's just that you got to shine brighter. You got to be tighter. You got to know. And I know you know that sometimes you felt more alone with all the people around you just so you can entertain and be, be, you know, told that you had the best, you were the best. That's the test. You had so much love built up inside of you until some nights you fell on your knees in tears, crying to your higher power because you didn't know how you got there. This was the test of time, sweetheart. You were going through the examination of life, your tears, your joy, your happiness, your love, your heart. Put all this behind you now. Separate from the illusion of what the lie that society told you about who you are by finding the true you within this test of time. You have been called to be connected to that energy which created you without even your father accepting and appreciating you. And I get that too. My father left me as well. Product of an extramarital affair. It's okay. It's okay. This too shall pass. And when it pass, when it passes, Robert, just like New York, just like 2008, just like the 90s, this too will be another test that will take time to learn, time to grow, time to maneuver. And people who have turned their backs on you, forgive them. Because if you don't forgive them, like Medea says, they will continue to control your life from within. Be happy no matter where you are. And that is the fastest way to remove yourself from the belly of the beast.
when these demons see that they cannot control your happiness, when they cannot control what it is you do for your future and you embrace and accept your new life, because this is your new life, whether you surpass it or not, this test of time, you are going to be examined on. You're going to be given a, a percentage of your grade from this. You have to begin to build yourself from this point. And that was something that came from a conversation that I had with one of my students. Very, very wonderful, wonderful young young woman in the field of criminal justice that's going, going forward with her bachelor's degree. And as we communicated on that, the test, the examination, the test of time that it's going to take, excuse me, for you to get through this is going to make or break your success. Not the judge, not the jury, not the observers, not the supporters. We're all in there. We're all mixed in there in the energy, not Bonjean, but you, baby boy, you are the one that is going to grow to be the man, to be the man that was the king who wore his crown, slanted, that now stands to be that great ultimate source of who you are. And that's how R. Kelly Appeal will continue to go down in history with your story continually being here, whether you're home or whether what, wherever your new place resides, keep your happiness there. You are the king wherever you go. Don't let dear goddess tell you any different. Don't let these liars, don't let your ex-wife, don't let none of these people who try to manipulate and bamboozle you and make you feel like you done lost your mind. Do not allow them to take that control over you because they will and leave you as an empty shell for you to come back to this planet as a baby again to go through the psychological lessons that you should learn this trip around. this trip around. Don't stay stuck in the past. Don't go back there. Stay continually focused. Stay continually meditated on whatever your desires are. Because I heard your music and I heard the wisdom through your music. I heard you saying that you were fed up, you were tired. I heard you telling your fans that even though I had throat surgery, I still came back, but shut up. Were you talking to yourself? Were you saying to yourself that it is my time to mute me? And through mute, muting you, you now have a whole movement. But sometimes we didn't know that the devil was coming in this way. Okay. I know what it feels like to be burdened by distractions. So you're, you're moving yourself from that. You're moving yourself from that. And it's a powerful thing. And Jennifer is with you. Jennifer is there. She is there. She is, she is there. I saw her and another one of her members standing in a bathroom, taking a picture like I got this. Yeah, we gonna do this. The power resides in the energies of the people that surround you. And my Jennifer Bonjean, I'm telling you, he worked miracles in that courtroom, along with the most high that was moving through both him, my jury, and my judge, you know? So you just hold your head up. And for Kelly Nation supporters, I mean, we just got to breathe. We got to meditate. We got to know that we know that he's going to be okay. We have to know that no weapon formed against him is going to prosper. It didn't prosper in New York. And many people are looking at me or listening to me saying, you crazy. It didn't prosper in New York. Why? Because we have an appeal. We have an appeal and they're looking, they're searching. 
They're, they're, they're taking their time through that. They're taking their time. So know this, the most high is with us all. And we all go through our test of time. So let's get, let's at least do some studying. Pick up the book, whatever book it is, whether it's a self-help book, whether it's a meditation book, whether it's the Holy Bible, whether it's a dictionary to learn some words, whether it's a criminal justice book, pick up a book. Find out who you are. Who are you without your title? Kelly Nation, who are we without our title? You don't know my title. You know me as R. Kelly Appeal TV, but you do not know who I am. You may be learning who I am because the passion that I bring to the channel, but you don't know me. You don't know what makes my happiness happen. You don't know my exams. I may share with you a few of them, but you don't know the whole true dynamic that makes me who I am. Learn who you are. Express that through your livelihood. Do not allow others to take you into that position where we will be ones in the courthouse with our name on it versus the state of where we live versus. Be mindful of the emotional attributes that we possess and be mindful of how our emotions feel. Right now, it feels like it's so congested. It feels like it's so tight. It feels like it's so hard to breathe, but I breathe. And when I inhale into my nostrils and I push that labor breath out of my mouth, I realized, ooh, I was tight. Ooh, my back was stiff. Knots all over the body, stress all in the mind. Now we gotta go to a substance to heal and using this as an excuse for a renewed addiction of any sort. I'm just saying thank you for being here. I thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing to this podcast. I thank all of you who come and, you know, maybe even sit in the background with really nothing to say, but you're listening. It's tapping into your test of time because we all gonna have that exam. That test of time is very valuable. It's very, very critical. Maybe we're being distracted by watching what's going on with Robert Sylvester Kelly. So we won't have to worry about our own test, but we're going to have to worry about our own test eventually. So put that in your mindset while we meditate and put the Chicago trial on the back burner and observe it. Let the jury handle that weight because they're the ones that's gonna to have to make the decision. Don't worry about the injustices. We know we've been unjust. There have been unjust situations happening in our lives since the beginning of our birth. We heard our parents talking about it. So what we thought that because someone had made it to the mountaintop, that had seen the mountaintop, like Martin Luther King saw the mountaintop. Believe me, the king had a fight there too. Malcolm had a fight there too. Everybody has that test of time and they have to know how to go through it and maneuver it to get through it. And the only way we know how and the only way we find out ways to do it is to observe other people's experiences. Not, I got this. Don't let your ego ride so much to where it's in the front seat and you sitting in the back seat with your eyes closed saying, oh God, I hope you know what you're doing. Let's not live like that. Let's live beyond this. 
Let's not look at the king of R&B as someone incarcerated that's been gain weight, that look old and they got pictures. I bet he would look different if an African-American drew that picture. He ain't got no ball spot. <laughs> like, you know, I know he's going to be different. He's going to be older. But come on, this test of time is not the physical being. It's not the physical attribute. It is the beauty from within the experiences in which we learn. And so with that, get to know yourself. Get to know yourself without your title. If you're a mother, get to know yourself without being a mother. Get to know who you are without the title mother. Because we were just talking about empty nest syndrome. When we put so much energy and vibration into our children and then our children move on, we're still expecting them to be that same 15, 16, 17 year old when they're 30, 40 and 50. We're looking mighty crazy when we realize that we didn't been here decades in an empty nest and we never lived our lives because we were still waiting for our children to grow up and they've been grown. So for those who have the empty nest syndrome, who, who's getting ready to embrace that? Yes, embrace it. Go visit your favorite place. We only have one life to live. And that's what Robert Sylvester Kelly's situation is teaching me. Don't allow your job to keep you struggling and stuck in the house and the pandemic is over. Never really was. Don't allow people and things and ideas to, to taint your ability to travel. I remember when the pandemic hit, traveling was, you can get a plane flight from here to Atlanta, Georgia for $39.99 through Expedia. Amazing the best time to travel. But 99.9% .9 of society was afraid. 84.2% of society had the COVID pandemic, had the COVID-19. 82.5% lived through it. But it was those couple thousands of people that made it all over the world look like millions. Know the value of what you see, read, and digest on social media. Please do that. And I don't even know how to end this broadcast right now. So I guess I'll just say thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing to this channel. Please come back and see us again. To those who are in need of, you know, someone to talk to, I'm here. Just send me a number, you know, inbox me. Um, my, my email is in my about section. So have, you know, I'll check my spam and see if that's because a lot of people's messages literally sit there until I just found out. <laughs> so I've been checking my spam and I have all this, all these messages, but we're here. Robert, we're here. We love you. We thank you so much for being here. And as always, keep it 100 and we will see you next time.